Hello everybody, this is Sneaky the Lost, and today uh, we are going to be getting into the brass tacks on how to convert an XMB file to a content patcher pack, and in general how to code a content patcher pack. Now, don't panic when I say code. We're not talking about something like C++ or, or, or some kind of, you know, Java coding or anything along those lines. This is very, very easy to do. Um, so what we're going to do, uh, well, let's start off with the easiest way. And that is, say, you have an XNB file that you have edited and you want to turn it into a content patcher pack quick and dirty what do we do okay and what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new folder here in our mods folder we're gonna start off with a CP in brackets because that's just a, a naming convention it's not required but it is suggested for naming conventions your mod you now have an empty folder with your mod what are we going to do with this? Well, let's first off, uh, I'm going to use my shed.xnb here as an example. And we're going to just drop your XNB file that you want to wrap in here. And uh, this is, by the way, appropriate if you are doing something like editing an indoor. Because that starts getting into tbin files that you can't really edit very well. Um, and other... Uh, things like um, stuff in buildings where it's just the one building in the XNB file so you're not going to run into any con potential conflicts because it shouldn't be overwritten by anything else. Things along these lines. Uh, it, this, this would be appropriate for. And so what we're going to do Oh, let's just we're going to need two files for every content patcher pack and that's going to be a content.json file and a manifest.json file that we can absolutely create but i'm going to save a step and i'm going to copy these and then i'm going to edit them to show you how easy they are so this program is notepad qq uh, that's because i run linux the alternative is notepad plus plus for windows users or I believe Mac also. And this is a very, very simple text editor, but it has a couple of useful things. Uh, it will track what language you're using, in this case, JSON. And it will also highlight open and closed brackets. If you are missing a bracket, it will tell you. It, it, it will, it, it's a very useful, simple, lightweight program to use to edit these documents. So the name is your mod. Uh, don't need us enter key there. My apologies. Author is you. It is your mod. It's version 1.0.0 because this is the first version of your mod as a content patcher pack. And description, your description here. Unique ID is going to be you dot your mod. That is the the code convention for that minimum API version right now if you're if you're coding for the 1.3 beta just use 2.5.5 that's the version of SM API required to run your mod that way if somebody is still running an older version of SM API that doesn't support what you're doing it, SM API will go hey you need to update me before this will work um, update keys that's gonna be more high level stuff that we're not going to get into now and then content pack 4 and as you can see here it requires pathoschild.contentpatcher obviously because that's what the program that is going to be running content patcher packs if you are a developer of a larger SMAPI mod that is using content patcher to add assets this is where you would put in your mod as well and that's it. That's manifest.json in a nutshell. Oh yeah, and, and the, the version, which is, uh, by the way, as you note, completely optional. I don't have to have this line in there. I just do that because me. And now then, let's look at the content.json. This is actually what it is doing. This is the file that is being read by content patcher 
to be able to run this thing. So um, changes, replace an entire file, action load. So I am going to be loading a file from file shed.x and b. This means it, it starts in the folder that the content.json folder is in. So it is looking at this particular file. That's the one that I dragged and dropped. Uh, and then targeting, you know, remember, it's all going to be in content. So content slash map slash shed.x and b. And all it does is does a swapsy do. It, it drags and drops. Done. That's it. Congratulations. You have now converted your X and B file into a content patcher pack. Congratulations. But let's say that you're wanting to do something a little bit more. Let's say you're wanting to start playing around with something, um, something in one of the loose sprites files, for example, which are pretty infamously cluttered. And you want it compatible with everybody else. So what are we going to do here? Well, for that, we're going to, uh, you know, the, the manifest JSON for something like this is going to be the exact same. No matter what we do, this manifest file will always be the same, just like we went over earlier. So the content.json is going to be action edit image. So we're going to be editing the image instead of just replacing everything. And in this particular case, we're targeting loose sprite slash cursors dot x and b and from the file bouncy chest dot png. So this one right here. And then we've got this area. So what does this area mean? Well, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at it, shall we? Here's the cursors file that we're editing. Only I'm going to be pulling this up in an editor. I use Pinta because I am on Linux. However, there are a plethora of options that you can use to edit this file this um, file with. The key thing here under view, ruler units, pixels, because content picture counts in pixels. Uh, so that's going to be important. And as you can see, I've got the pixel coordinates here. And if I've got an area like this guy, it will also tell me the area that it is in. And so I can very easily and quickly go in here, say I just want to replace this area. And now I have the coordinates and I have the area. And those go right in here. So as you can see, roughly 367, 33 in that area. Um, pixels are kind of hard to get up precisely, but in that area. And then the height and width is roughly 72 by 17. Roughly, again, uh, you know, you, it, it's a little bit bigger, but you get the idea. It's roughly the same. If you really want to get more precise, you just have to zoom in more. And then you can start getting in and fiddling with things a little bit more. Whoop, too far something like so and then 72 comes out a little bit more oops there we go so something like that basically as you can see it is replacing these worms with this file so it basically takes this drags Drops. Done. So that's how you edit. And as you can see, it's very, very straightforward to do. Um, once you have unpacked all of these files, it's, it's a very straightforward process. Uh, now then, editing data files is a little bit different. So let's use LazyFish as an example of that manifest obviously is going to have the exact same conventions just like we've gone over so you don't need to worry about that anymore because we've already done that several times now content.json this is a little bit confusing so let's look at the original and we can go over what we're doing here so with fish.json all of the files in the data folder uh, look kind of like this 
And what we're looking at in general is you have this thing that is the item ID. This is how the game references this line of code. So when I look at my content.json, there's the lines of code that I'm wanting to edit. And then this has a bunch of fields. You, you see all of these slashes here? Each slash denotes a different field. And so we start with field zero because, you know, we're talking about computers. They like to count starting from zero. Field one, field two, field three, field four, etc. So this is editing field one, which is this number 80 here. And we're going to replace it with the number 30, which makes the fish slow down. And then we're going to edit field two which is floater and make it smooth which as you can see I did to most of these and that's it that's all I do all I'm editing is these two fields for all of these fish except the ones that are in the traps now each of the um, data files has their own conventions about what fields do what with them so that's going to be a little bit more complex and a little bit outside the scope of this tutorial. But that's kind of an, an idea of what we're looking at with an edit data mod. So let's take a look at another option that uses variables. Uh, and this one actually uses a config file. Colorway garrison. Okay. So, content.json, because remember, manifest will be the same regardless. Config schema, that's saying we're going to pull information from the config file. Colorway. And so, what we're looking at here is this word, in this case, garrison, which is right here. Notice, allow values, it only has a few specific values that it will allow. This is so we don't end up with issues where you're, you're asking for something that the computer doesn't know what it is and then it, it panics and, and crashes on you. We don't want that. So basically what this does is it says if you don't choose one of these options, I'm just not going to run. <laughs> okay. And that's generally a good way to do things. That way you, you're not causing all kinds of odd crashes for your users. Um, so... From Now, here, this looks very similar to what I was doing with the shed.xnb. Action load, target. This time we're looking at in the buildings folder and the barn. From file assets, the variable colorway, which we pulled from the config file, which, as we said, was garrison. And then the season as a variable. And you can use this as a variable in your content.json code to denote whatever season is currently in your game. And then barn.png. So let's take a look at this assets folder that it's referencing. And that's right in here. And as you can see, you've got your six different config options, each one named in a folder. So this will tell me which of these folders to open. So right now it's telling me to open garrison. And then it's going to tell me to open whatever season is appropriate. And so let's say we're starting in spring. It would open up spring and it would use this one right here. So this is, and then he does this basically for all of the other buildings that go on your farm. And he even has some edits for Shane's Coop. Although he has to go about it in a slightly different way because of how it works because it's technically a different type of building. Uh, and then the bee houses down here because that, those also look cool but are different. So as you can see, he's using some variables, but it's still a very straightforward kind of idea here. All we're doing is taking these pictures and replacing the stock pictures with them. So, um, I hope this has been useful to people. 
that I have explained a little bit more in depth on the code, how to write the code. And if all you're looking for is how do I convert an X and B file to a content patcher pack, you got that in the first five minutes of the video. If you're wanting to do something a little bit more involved, I hope I have uh, given you the information that you need. Obviously, you've got other resources out there. You've got the Discord channel. You've got um, the, the forums. has an entire modding forum within the Stardew Valley forums that you can go to and ask for help. Uh, there's an entire thread there. So you've got resources out there. Reach out. We'll be more than happy to help you. Not a problem. So as always, be excellent to one another. And this is Sneaky the Lost, signing off.